G'day, mate. Welcome to the Board Draw Football Podcast. And today, we're going to be covering all things 23-24. With our guy, Angie Pustacoglu, mate. He talks a bit more like this. He's like Sean Dyche, but from down under. He's like an Aussie Sean Dyche, he is. Today, we are going to be covering Tottenham Hotspur in our 23-24 season previews. We're going to be covering how they got on last season, what they've been doing in the transfer window, and how we're going to, how we think they're going to line up next season. Indeed. Shall we start off with how they did last week? They had serial winner, Antonio Conte. They got him, got him in, and they were like, yes, this plan cannot go wrong. A front three of Kane, Son, Kulusevski, a serial winner like Conte. Bringing in the likes the of Charlison, Trophies are going to happen. Yeah, we said they had one of the best windows going. A second only to uh, the team that finished second in the league. Gosh, my boys. But yeah, we were quietly confident that Spurs were going to have a good season. Little do we know that as we speak right now, heading into the start of the Prem at the beginning of August, Harry Kane's on his way out. They've put Antonio Conte on his deathbed. They... Have Joe Lewis Son have his biggest stinker. Joe Lewis He's getting locked up, they won't let him out. He's getting indicted alongside the likes of Jeffrey Epstein, probably. Daniel Levy's still bald. There's a mess at Spurs. But they're lucky. They're lucky. Because they've got they've got the man from down under. Duh, duh, duh. Yeah, I mean, from a land down under. That's yeah, yeah. yeah, sorry, I was like, what are you doing? But um, <laughs> no, yeah, but that's uh, this season situation. Last season, they started the season okay, actually. And then they hit a bit of a lull around mid-season. Well, they were carrying on from the what they tailed off in the previous season. Yeah. Under Conte, when he, since he came in, they were like one of the best teams in the league. Yeah. Uh, Points-wise, points per game. They were performing well. They were scoring goals. Everything looking honky-dory. Yep, last season started well again. And then it just got stale. And I'd say they were up there, we were saying this, with one of the worst teams in the league in terms of playing style. Just, they were so They dull. would go behind every single game. It was dullness plus just a lack of ability they would turn to up. start they would in turn the first up half. 20 minutes after everyone else had started. And teams like so they were like 5-0 down to Newcastle in 20 minutes. I think when we played them at the beginning of the season, we were like 2-0 up in 10 minutes. It's Yeah, there's just, as a fan... I can imagine it was so frustrating knowing that every game you're you, sat you, you start in from the behind. most beautiful yeah. stadium. Best you've got stadium like in a the world. Bar that's a mile long. You just, oh, just you've got Harry Kane up front in his prime, and you still go two nil behind down. You've to ruined my Don's every... career so badly that he's got no trophies and he's doing fucking hot ones in America to get clout. What is going on here? You should be getting trophies for this guy. Imagine if he went to Real Madrid early on and he was like a serial winner. How many trophies would England have? I don't even want to think about it's it. A, it's a difference. It's a difference. But yeah, it's be, it was a rough end to the season Got for Spurs. Stale. They're just constantly going behind. They didn't know that. I mean, their back line was an absolute joke from their goalkeeper to their centre back pairing to the wing backs, even. They, they just didn't know what was going on. They bought an Ivan Perisic. Everywhere. Bought an Ivan Perisic. He was, he was like, he's a killer, cold blooded killer. Stock him left back for the whole season. Didn't make any use of his ability to play as a wing back. And it was, yeah, it was poor. Son had his worst season in a Spurs shirt. Harry Kane was the only, only shining light. There's a difference in that between team. them finishing eighth and like relegation 17th. form. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it was, it was, it was bad. Um, the highlight of their season was the handshake, mate. And that feels like a bloody. Decade ago. Battle of the Bridge. Yeah, that was that was good. That was yeah. Apart from that, I didn't see any single bit of fight in that Spurs team. Yeah, uh, they no bowed passion, out of the cha- no they, aggression. They bowed out of the Champions League in a sort of miserable fashion. Yeah, they're, um, they're a wet club full of wet dons. <laughs> Fuck Spurs. They needed they Sorry. needed a change in mentality, and um, they need to go back to basics. Shout out, was it Heady One? Heady One. Yeah, come on. Um, they need to go back to, and I. everyone's like, oh, Spurs, they're known for not really winning anything, but playing quite nice football. I don't really know them for that. I know them for being big, fat pagans. But you need to go back to what you're good at. And if it is just being kind of like a team 
that doesn't win much but excites people, go back to that. Because I think they got kind of ahead of themselves thinking they are this big trophy winning club. And that's, I don't, I mean, I mean every, they had like, every team they had like that. a second place finish in the Premier League, and nearly won the Premier League. And then, then they had a Champions League, League final. But along the, that way, under Pochettino, they played nice football. They're one of the most exciting teams in the Prem. But now... They had the opportunity to win a trophy under Jose. They've gone for short-term success with these managers like Jose and Conte and kind of in that essence lost their way, lost their kind of attractive playing style. They've kind of lost their team full of players that you wanted to root for and kind of gone for like mercenaries in managerial sense and in player sense. And so I think it's nice going into the new season... I think it's nice. ...that... They've kind of they lose back, like they're going back to basics, yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. Let's talk about what they've done so far in the uh, summer transfer window. <laughs> Starting off with the big one, a transfer in the managerial sense. Yes. So oh, I thought you were going to talk about um, matters, but yeah, let's start no, with the manager. Let's talk about the manager. That's the big one for me. That's the one that gets me most excited. It's not a transfer in in, in essence. We fucking but... love an Aussie. We do. Mate, Ange Postacoglu, he is rated so highly around the world by not just other football managers, but football hipsters. And that's the people you need to impress. Um, he's been. He done bits at Celtic. He's got a track winning, uh, a, a track record of winning trophies wherever he goes. And he's done it sort of in a stranger route. He hasn't really managed a big club apart from Celtic. Mm. But this is the biggest club he's managed. Time in Australia, time in China. Japan, Japan, Australia. I think maybe Celtic. So yeah, he's done. He's done the rounds, and he plays. He seems football. like a knowledgeable guy. Plays football. He is a man with an eye for beautiful football. He, and yeah, it's just nice hearing an Australian accent in the Premier League. Yeah. I can love it, mate. Yeah, I mean, he loves having marauding number eights, attacking wing backs. Bombing strikers, high press, high press, energy, exciting football, yeah. and it's what Spurs need. They don't need these pragmatic managers like Jose and um, Antonio Conte. Bring back sexy football, mate. They are going to bring back football, and if they win, they're going to do it well. And if they lose, it's still going to look kind of pretty. So it's exciting times. Well, it's like a lot like... of Spurs fans have been saying how they were like, mate. Bin it off. Let's just at least let me enjoy watching the football. Exactly that. And that's what I got from the very first game under Postacoglu. They played West Ham in pre-season. Lost 3-2. Yeah, they went like 2-0 down, didn't they? But all I heard as like a coming out of that game from Spurs fans was that they loved the game. They thought they played great football and didn't really give a fuck. Obviously, it's pre-season, so you don't really give a fuck if you lose. But as the, it was such a change. The juxtaposition from that kind of playing style to the, Conte football, the yeah. end of the Conte era was night and day. And so I think for Spurs fans, the result didn't matter. And for a lot of clubs that aren't at the very top of the league, results don't often matter. You win some, you lose some. Unless you're battling for the league where you need to win every single time, results don't often matter. So if you have some weeks where you win, some weeks where you lose, but along the way, you're playing football that excites everyone, excites the fans, that's what it's all about. If really. you can see the fundamentals of a good footballing team there and mm. the results don't come straight away, you can give it time. And that's why Arteta got time at Arsenal. 100%. So we're excited for the Postal Coglu era. Maybe me more so than uh, this guy here. Let's move on to talk about their actual transfer activity because for me, going into this window, there were three main talking points. Um, number one, Hugo Lloris. Need to get in the bin. Waste man. Needed a keeper in badly, and they have they bought a keeper in. Yeah. Uh, they needed another centre back. They needed someone to either partner Romero, or just do it all his own. Get him. rid of Eric Dyer because he's a waste man. The third point was they need to do everything in their power to keep Harry Kane. Oh, I wasn't going to even say that. And not let it drag on. I was going to say the third thing was. There is no creativity in that midfield. So they need a create man. All always man, right? create yeah. man, yeah. But yeah, no, for me, the the Hurricane Saga is the main talker point. Yeah, that's a problem. And but I yeah. think they're not going to have him. We'll talk about that at the end. Number one, the goalkeeper, Hugo Lloris, fell off hard. 
we were we spoke about this in our Man United episode. Call yes. out two keepers at the end of the season, De Gea and Hugh Lloris. They're both gone. So watch out, goalkeepers. We're coming for you. But, um, but yeah, Hugh Lloris wasn't doing it anymore. We saw that at the end of the season. He's getting replaced by that Fraser Forster. They put in, uh, what's his name? Vic- Victini? Vicario. Vicario. Yeah. I can't say I know too much about him. He was in the Serie A. I don't think... I've heard good things. I like. I, I, he's like a bit of like a... An enigma. No, he's like a bit of a showreel keeper, maybe. Oh, is that what we like? I don't know. I think a club like Spurs... Should be going in for a name. Robert Sanchez, we mentioned. We've talked about him every single time. David Raya mentioned him. Anana before he signed for Man United. 100%. If Spurs, and I know this is me kind of contradicting myself that you've got to kind of get back to what you want. But like, they've got the money. Obviously, they've got the stadium problem and the Harry Kane problem to deal with. So maybe their, their kind of focus isn't currently on the goalkeeper. But for me, I think there's probably better keepers on the market. But... I don't know. I don't want to judge him too early. And to be fair, you're replacing Hugo Reece, So for me, it's an upgrade. It's an upgrade. Yeah. yeah, it's hard to be a downgrade yeah. from there. But yeah, for me, that it was one of the most important parts of what they need to do in the summer. The level of keeper they could have gone for probably could have been higher, but they bought someone in that they were targeted. So fair play. The centre-backs, it's not been enough going on. Still waiting on that one. Big yeah, man. still waiting on that one. If we if they start the season with uh, Romero... And Dyer. And Dyer. Uh, were they looking to make Longley? Is Longley a permanent? Uh, yeah, I think they're looking to. I don't know if they've actually done it, but even him doesn't Not fill me enough. with confidence. I know they were linked to Levi Colwell when he initially le- went back from Brighton to Chelsea. It's but not going to happen though, is with it? With Fafana being injured for a long time now, I think Levi Colwell definitely stays. Yeah. And if he does leave, it's definitely not to Spurs. I mean, it's probably to Liverpool. So. It's so bad that I actually would have rather them. I would rather have Colin Cody than... Mate, no, no. there's some... Oh, it's so bad. Ben Davis is shit. Um, Eric Dyer is shit. Longley is shit. I, I don't I, like I... Romero, but out of all of those, he'd be the one I keep. Joe Roden, meh. They've got some absolute stinkers at centre-back. So for me, that is one of the places they need to concentrate on a lot. Full-backs, I think they're fine. They've got Pedro Porro. They've got Udogi, who they signed last season, but loaned him straight back to Udinese. He's coming back now. And I think he'll probably, alongside um, Sessegnon, I think they'll probably rotate as kind of the marauding fullbacks that, um, what's his face like, Poster Coglu likes. Jed Spence. Jed Spence. That's good rotation with um, fucking Pedro Porro. If so that'll he be can good. kick on. Because he had a bit of a, a niffy season. Yeah, it, I it, think he'll be buzzing under Poster Coglu. I think that, that mate, seems it's like so, a, a it's kind of so, nice connection. Yeah, it seems like a match made in heaven. So yeah, definitely the centre-backs are worried about. But we'll move on to the midfield where I think they have done wonders. They've done they've done absolute bits. We're talking, so the, the the holding player, so Poster Coglu likes to play a 4-3-3. A quite a standard 4-3-3. Yeah, a big one, a, a middle hold- one and a forward one. Yeah, so you've got the, the holding player, which... Most likely will be Basuma this season. Has to be Basuma. Has if it's be. Um, Hoiberg, he can't do enough defensive doesn't, work. Doesn't have it. enough legs in him no. to And I can't think of that. anyone else. Maybe Skip, but even still, I don't think Hol- he does enough. Oh, mate, he's just not good enough, is he? Nah. Um, but yeah, and Ben Tukur as well. Like Ben Tukur a lot. He'd think- probably play that middle one, and he'd, he's perfect for that middle role. Does the defensive work enough? Does the forward work enough? But doesn't do enough of either, so he's perfect for that yeah. middle one. Fits right into the middle. He's a talented player, and I think even anyone who watch his Spurs can tell he, he's got something about yeah, him. Basuma, Bentuka and James Madison could be a midfield trio that strikes heart into the fear. Heart into the fear or fear into the heart? That is what I, I'm so, I'm so taken aback by the beauty yeah, of it. Yeah, that is nice. What we've said about Spurs, apart from the fact they've got a bozo defensive unit. Why point at me? A bozo <laughs> defensive unit. Have you seen this guy at Power League? Reeks, mate. But <laughs> bozo defensive unit is that Apart from that defensive problem, they just ne- never have creativity. And what they've done is not sort out the defensive unit, which will be funny for the neutral, they'll concede bare. But James Madison, what he does is he comes straight in and fixes that creativity issue straight away. So Harry Kane, he is so good at dropping deep. And he was having to be the, the creator and the finisher for them last season. Mm. If he stays, he's got someone to do that creative work for him. Yeah, I think and- it's good because it will stop Harry Kane dropping deep. If Harry Kane leaves, they've got someone who does the creative work that he does. Yeah. Well, so, we'll talk about Harry so, Kane. We'll, yeah, we'll move on to talk about him. If Harry Kane does leave, for me, 
Spurs have done enough. Spurs have done enough. I think they, in in in, yeah. in bringing in Postal Coglu, yeah, and in bringing James Madison, I think they've got the blend. Obviously, you're not you. It's, how do you replace a player like Harry Kane? You can't. He he is the best in the world at what he does. He's for me probably the most complete striker in world football. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can't replace him because he is creative. He, he, one of the best creative players in the Premier League, and one of the best finishers in the Premier League. Top two in both uh, uh, respects for me, but. James Madison, he does that. He he's the link between. He's a missing link between that midfield and that attack, which they've been missing so dearly. Mm-hmm. I liked. I actually really like a front three of Son, Richarlison, and Kulusevski. I'm totally on board. I was gonna pitch the thing, the the notion that Spurs would be better off selling Harry Kane. I don't. I don't think any team's better off without Harry Kane. I think they are. So for me. It's, it's con- context. Context is king <laughs> right now. They lose him for nothing at the end of this season, and he's not going to sign a new contract. Postacoglu plays with a very aggressive pressing number nine, which Harry Kane isn't. So that's already two negatives. Obviously, you lose his goals and assists. That's a massive. <laughs> Obviously, you lose like a, a forty goal contributions situation. A season. <laughs> but you get a hundred million. If you use that 100 million properly... Get a get better goalkeeper and a centre-back. You could genuinely, with that 100 million, go to Brighton right now and be like, his 60 million, give me Evan Ferguson. That's... And it's you, not an and upgrade. And you still have some. And it's not a... It is a downgrade, but it's not a mega downgrade. I think Evan Ferguson on the long haul will do problems, mate. So I think... And then you're still with 40-50 in the bank. Get yourself a nice little centre-back. Agree. So I think... I think for me... Maybe for the, for the Kane. team, for the team overall, the balance would be. If we're talking about going back to basics, maybe going back to basics is going back to Spurs without Harry Kane. Yeah, it's, is it's that a, it, the question? It, it is a tough one. It's a tough one because no one really knows what's going on anymore. Man United looked to have signed uh, Rashford Hoyland, which sort of takes him out the race for Harry Kane. Mm. The only team now left in that race. With Bayern Munich. Bayern Munchen. Which reeks. Which I, I, I don't even think Harry Kane wants to go there. No. I mean, he'll win he'll win trophies, but it, not, it is what it is. Like, yeah. Why? Yeah. Is it? Let's talk about how they're going to line up next season under Ange Postacoglu. Spurs kicking off their season away. At Brentford, at uh, New Griffin Park or wherever it is. Oh, that, that just that, reeks of a loss. Ten and stadium. like all the Spurs fans losing their head. Yeah, for me, so Ficaro's come in as their goalkeeper. He He's going to be starting for me. Yeah. Um, Pedro Porro on the right, Romero. Who partners Romero? Yeah, I think we're still waiting for that centre back to partner. Remember. Someone, someone. I, I, I think if Harry Kane leaves, they definitely get someone else in. Mm. But at the minute, maybe Ben Davies and uh, Udogi. He's a good player. Yeah, on the left, Ryan Sessegnon potentially could be that um, replacement in the left hand side role. Yep. He done all right last season, but he didn't feel anyone with too much confidence. But moving on to midfield is where the magic really happens. We're looking at Basuma, Madison. Madison. And Benton Kuro skip. I don't mind skip. I don't like Oliver Skip. I think he's very overrated. He reeks to me of just like a Harry Winks regen. Did Harry Winks not go to Leicester? Yeah. 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 He just reeks of like Harry Winks, like retires on football manager and comes back as a regen. And he's literally exactly the same guy. Harry Winks, Oliver Skip, Tom Carroll. They're like three players who were just like... It's, just, it's like the same guy in different names. Luke, Luke Amos. They all got the same driver's license, which is just different names. Yeah, they're just... Yeah, they're just like... What's going on the, the region. They're the same person. Yeah. But, yeah, to me, if you play Bentecourt there instead, that's, that's a nice, a, balanced, that's a good fluid midfield. Midfield, uh, midfield, yeah. And then we've said the front three of Kulusevsky, Son, and Richardson. If they don't keep Kane, Kane obviously is in the team if he's, he's there, but... Yeah, Spurs fans, let us know. Is it time to move on for Harry Kane? Is it time to cash in? Is... Either you lose him now and you get 100 million or you would lose him for nothing next summer. Is your story really waiting and losing Harry Kane on a free? The, that the problem reach. is though, like, so in the long run, before we end this off, let's just talk about it. In the long run, are you better off? Like, are you gonna, what are you going to win this season? 
Are you are you are you in the talks to win the Premier League? You're not. You you you're in the talks with Champions League qualification, hundred percent. Are you gonna win a European competition? Not in that. Are you gonna win an FA Cup? You might do. Could you win an FA Cup without Harry Kane? You could. Facts. For me, you might be better off just taking that hundred million. Hundred million for a player with one year left on his contract. We were mugging at his Man age. United for signing Mason or, Mount. Mason Mount for sixty mil with one year left on his contract. Harry Kane obviously is probably twice the player Mace Mount is. Yeah, but he's but older. He's fucking a million years older. So and he's yeah. If you're cashing in 100 mil for a player with one year left, that is crazy money. Mace Mount could have stayed, but you know Harry's he, he's not going to stay past that year. So maybe you were, are better off. Let us know down below, Spurs fans. Does he stay or does he go? Fuck Spurs. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you did like this video, remember to hit that subscribe button. We are pulling out all the content on the lead up to the Premier League season. And when the season starts, it doesn't stop. So make sure you are subscribed. We do appreciate it. Comment down below. Talk to us. Let us know how you thought, what you thought about all our little comments in the video. We do appreciate that as well. And hit that like button. Spurs fans, it's going to be an interesting season. Shout out Apostacolo, mate. Shout out all the Aussies out there. It's been Bordeaux and it's live.